And we now have a few more pieces to remove in the center of the, of the unit. We have our front cowl piece, which you'll remove the plastic and, and stuff from it as well. You have a trunk that mounts to the back. And you also have a uh, the, the front uh, steering column, which you remove the plastic from it as well. You put this on because you want to be careful of how you're going to route your cables. It's very important because if you route them wrong, it can bind up and keep it from turning a certain direction or also create a situation where it puts premature wear on the wiring. So, with a, your Speedo cable, which is different from your wires, and it goes you see this here? This is your speedo cable. It runs up to the back of the unit. And you want it to run to the left of this center post right here. Everything else can, become, can go to the right. But you don't want to have anything dragging, you don't want to have anything binding. And you can take the steering unit and slide it down on the shaft here and make sure that it spins free with no, with no pulling or binding on the wires. Same thing with this one, and you have a few pieces from around the frame, so you're not tripping on them, sliding on them, or getting the hardware confused with what is actually going on the bike. The seat lock in the back, and open the seat to find the rest of the items that are sitting with the bike. You have a front fender. safety man, uh, CD, a parts manual, and a tool kit. These three items put to the side, these should go back in the, underneath the seat at the, at the uh, completion of the, of the assembly. You should probably find, uh, uh, go find, um, we, which we have several spares at this moment. Unwrap carefully. Set them to the side. You have hardware and a, uh, a, a lever that goes on your center stand that helps you uh, actually, actually put the bike up on the center stand. Here's on, on what's going on, but in the past, these vehicles have come with the battery underneath the seat and it needs to be uh, uh, assembled, charged, and put back in the bike. Uh, but right now, it looks like they're shipping them with the lead with them at least in the battery compartment, but I want to late. So since I want to be able to charge the battery, I want it to be ready at the time that I'm completing the bike so that I can start it up with no delays and have to wait. Take the bolts out of the battery cover, which is a Phillips screwdriver, and there's four that hold it down. Yes, I do have a battery. It's not hooked up properly, so at this point in time, I will actually take it to the truck. And this is very important. You want to clean off the top of the battery terminals because there's a corrosion on them or a coating that keeps them from connecting properly if you don't. These have been shipped overseas. Uh, the salt in the ocean, whatever, it, it, it corrodes it a little bit. So you want to quickly clean the top of those terminals off. bolt that holds the steering knuckle, the steering assembly together, and a collar. Show it to me. Put it in front of the camera. The bolt. That is funny shaped. It's flat on one side and beveled on the other. Uh -huh. So I'm going to slide it on my bolt with the flat edge up against the bolt head. So it looks like this. And I'm going to slide it in. I may have to slightly lift up on it as I push it in until it, it's flush all the way to the back. This is one of the first steps we proceed to use because it helps it helps uh, make it easier when to get the bike off the frame. The front steering uh, uh, forks onto the frame and it keeps it mounted down. I want to remove the nut. This is usually uh, just a shipping nut. It can be thrown away as well. And then I'm going to 
I need my push. And I'll reach down as I lift up with my knees, rock it, and slide that out so that it just it's just an easy an easy process without hurt hurting your back or anything like that. My speedo gear, and that it has a seal in place. I want to make sure that I have a spacer that was on the axle bolt. And then of course my nuts should be in my hardware. Now that slide to the side, lift up and pull the back of it off. Come around and lift up on the handlebars to slide the frame out and away. And now I've got, I don't have a lever for the center stand, but I can still put my foot on it to hold it down as I lift up and slide it back so I can rock it back. And now it's sitting ready for grab a tire. I have a little tray with me as I pull the bolts out and drop from the tray so I can just dump them in an appropriate container at a later time. Bolts, the nuts or the screws or whatever, into the little pocket here on the, on the uh, bike itself and I'll put the cover back on the bike. The goal here is to never have any of your parts or bolts or anything on the floor where if you have to get called away or walk away that somebody can then walk by and not be paying attention and accidentally kick them somewhere. So um, I tend to work from trays. And I'll take all my hardware and dump it in the tray so that I can easily see what I've got and what's left. Nuts here. I've got two smaller ones that are gonna go on the kickstand lever and they go with two bolts to mount it bigger nuts that are going to mount both my axle and my steering knuckle. So, I'm setting my parts right here on the bike. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I need to mount the front tire to the vehicle. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hold it onto it and sometimes I'll put this in here to, for, for leverage to push towards the outside and run that brake pad back into the housing to give me plenty of clearance to slide the brake disc on the tire into that. So I'm gonna slide back around here. And then I'm gonna lift the tire up into that groove and put the spacer right here in the tire through the seal and lift it up to this so I can slide this through. Not all the way because now I'm going to come to my um, notches. notches in it that are going to slide into the tire which has the uh, appropriate notches here. Those have to line up so that when I slide them on I'm, I'm going to go ahead and spin this so that when I slide it on, it's gonna be lined up to those notches. Here and here. Excuse me. And I want it so that it slides all the way back. And when you know when you know when it slid all the way back, you know it's correct when you can take this, which by the way has a notch right here on the top. Mm -hmm. See this notch? Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's gonna line up with I'm gonna pull it back off. This uh, section of the, of the of the speedo gear, and that's what holds this in place to keep it from spinning when the, when the wheel spins. So again, I'll check my alignment. I'm gonna slide that back on, and from where it just touches, it's gonna go on quite a bit more. If it doesn't, you need to figure out why. Because if you if you don't get those lined up and you just push that on there, and you struggle with getting it in there then um, it's going to um, crush those tabs and bend them down and then you'll have a problem where the speedo doesn't work. And push fully back. Now when it's pushed fully back, you should be able to slide this up in here so that this, this notch here is lined up with there. 
right here. Those two, those two are lined up right here. Okay. Um, and then from there you can slide through your steering knuckle like that. It's ready for the nut and. Is down, you should always use some type of a Loctite. We, we recommend red Loctite. On the threads, just a couple of drops before you actually uh, spin it down. But you can use the regular ratchet for this as well. And I'm going to zip this down. And uh, here at the end, I'm going to put a final torque on it by hand to make sure it's tight enough. Forward and check your speedo to see that it moves. It's not going to move much because you're moving it by hand, but you can at least check to see that it's working before you move on. Because at this point, it's able to be moved around, and if I need to move it for some other operation or whatever, I need to move on to something else and put this to the side, I can then easily put it up and down on a kickstand. And how you want to mount that is so that the uh, con curve side is going to be on it, facing towards the out. So. You want it so that the pedal goes out and angles backwards like this. And so the flat side is up. I've seen people mount them like that and that's wrong. It's also like that. Bolts with two nuts. Let's go through here. And right now I've got from the factory, I've got weld slag on here, which is keeping me from putting this one in easily. And, make, and if it can be easily knocked off, then I'll do that. Bolt. I'm going to put those through the holes. And I'm gonna put the nuts on the back. that nut in place and zip, zip it down the screw, uh, bolt. And I'm going to do the same for the other one. This vehicle around by dropping it off the stand and, and or easily put it back up on it. And it also is going to get locked tight. If I accidentally drop something, if I kick it, if I've got a cluttered floor, then I'm going to spend a lot of time looking for things that I shouldn't mm -hmm. have to. So, this is a 14 millimeter nut. Makes it easier on me in the long run because I'm putting a lot of these things together, so I want to be able to just get, get it up in there and hold it. And this is not a great angle to be working with. So, like it. Well, again, we're working with 13, 14, 12, and 10 for our our tools so far that's in millimeter here everything my cables are right and I've got my bolt here which I'm gonna move this slightly back towards the center so I can get enough space to slide this in and firmly on that bolt and I'm gonna turn it to the left my left as I'm facing the vehicle and I'm going to put this nut on the back side which may require two hands. Oh, and you accidentally drop this nut. It is retrievable, but it's no fun. It drops into this cowling in the front and goes up under the bike, and then you have to fish it out. Which I tend to try and use like a magnet on a long, uh, on a long flexible uh, uh, spring, whatever, and to grab it. it makes it a lot easier. But the bolt, and I'm gonna. Put it on this and i'm going to spin it back while pushing against to get some pressure to hold that on and i'm going to spin this up again and with the longer ratchet so that you know that it's fully tight these have a tendency to loosen up if they're not completely tight and that is i've got a fresh charge on this so i'm fairly confident it won't have to be tightened much, much if at all but um flexing or or loose in any type of way. This one's good. Now since I'm here, I'm also going to check something that they assembled from the factory. 
and that's there's a couple of nuts here that change the tension of the bearings in here which if it's loose you'll have one that moves the whole thing will move back and forth uh, when they break it'll it'll it will shift and that's something that you can change here if you need to change that and tighten it up further you'll take the top nut loose and you'll spin the bottom bottom one further down until it's, it's snug and then you'll tighten the top one on top of it to lock them up against each other so that they don't move and that there's no uh, and that they're not rubbing on anything when, when they move and um, always I'm thinking about if I put a panel on here what might uh, what 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 I don't want to take things back and forth hard so if I don't check these and say one's apart then I'll get this panel on here which is this one here and it requires four screws plus one here in the center and you've got to snap it in as well so I want to avoid having to take that back off and make sure that everything is complete before I do. Gas in the vehicle, the battery in the vehicle, and to try and start it. Again, we're trying for nothing that has to be taken apart to get to something else. So, you need to see that it's held in with one screw. If I take that screw out, I can flip it up and have access to the top of the carburetor. Now I can also adjust the idle screw on this. So if it's, when I try and start it, if it's running too low, I can uh, turn that up and um, uh, adjust it so that it, it won't die on you. Where you're gonna put gas in it, take a moment, stop, and realize that these are coming from China and they miss little details sometimes. Uh, right up underneath here, you'll have your gas lines, a fuel filter, and it's all coming from the tank. And you want to take a brief moment and make sure those lines are actually connected, both coming into this little cutoff valve and coming out. And this is coming into it right here. Right here. So make sure those are no, make sure those are connected and then connected to the carburetor. So now I know that if I fill it with gas, it's not gonna leak out on the floor and create a mess. About five seconds worth of fill. One, two, three, four five to store a large amount of gas here so we really don't have the the time or the uh, resources to store gas here legally where we can fill everything to the top it's a gas station across the street yeah. usually is yeah okay so take care of which is right here it comes with a kit that you have to pull uh, the battery out you have to pull the uh, the, the container of acid out and you'll put it in the top and gently push it in there and it will puncture the seals on the acid and it will all drain in there is one complete unit. When it's completely in there, you wanna gently pull the thing out so that it doesn't splash on you. Throw, dispose of that, put the top on, and then, and then I always recommend to charge them at least 15, 20 minutes. Um, because even though the, with, if you have to assemble it and put the acid in it, the chemical reaction will cause uh, a 60 to 70 percent charge on the battery it's good to top them off and that and, um the, I, ideally the goal here is to be conscientious of the fact that although while chinese we have the american american ingenuity and know-how to improve upon what they've sent us and so that we want no comebacks during warranty periods and most generally these down in here on top of those terminals just so that when I drop the battery into the casing, they don't bounce out and I have to fish for them and have to start all over again. So nice and gently so that it sits in here and I have a positive and a negative uh, indication on my battery. For us and all different purposes, negative is the black wire and red is the positive wire. Um, can tight without actually torquing them down where you twist the terminals uh, because these are made of uh, lead and can bend and uh, be damaged easily. 
So I want to get that started so that it won't come out. And I'm going to do the same for this one. And again, I, I tend to try and get everything started before I, I tighten anything down. That way I have room to move things around and, 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 and account for alignments. Assemble things and you don't have to fight with it. Okay, so I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to run it down so that my terminals are so that I have I can easily move these up I'm gonna take this bottom wire and bend it down and I'll bend this one slightly up so I can take this uh, insulator and slide it over on this terminal and because I paid attention to the way that it, this runs you'll see that these are square and that to line up properly they should cover that terminal as well they weren't placed on there after they get the vehicle home they'll think oh they didn't do something blah, 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 and they'll be uh thinking automatically that something's gonna be wrong with their vehicle right off the bat it's general generally a good idea to put them on there uh, as, as a practice Step back down with the four screws and you want to be careful that you're actually going in the holes underneath because these are not don't always line up properly and you're actually going into these posts here, back here and here, and then a clip in the, in, in the, in the front here. And once you're, once you're sure that your alignments are good, you can then take them all the way to the bottom. Don't over torque, don't over tighten these. They are down to the bottom. That should be good. And and I want to make sure that my switches are proper. I've got a kill switch here that has to be in the run position, and that symbol is by an arrow that, that, that goes over the top and down to the uh, right, clockwise. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure it's in that position. Make, I always turn my headlights down to dim. Make sure my uh, um, turn signals are in the center. And this is a good point in time to test for electrical. That's the reason why I didn't put this plate on in front. Back. And then I'm going to do the same for the left. And then I'm going to check my horn. And then I'm going to check for my tail light by depressing the brake pedal or a brake switch. I want to check both the left and the right switches. Because there's a switch on each on each uh, on each one that operates the, the, the brake light. Now, if you have a brake light that that comes on, then you know if troubleshooting, you can check with the brake light. If you have a brake light, then you know you have what you need to start the bike for about ten. Seconds. Now I'm going to pump it a couple of times. If you have a problem with these, we keep a spray bottle of gas gasoline in the shop at all times we do not recommend starting fluid on these these motors are too small for that and starting fluid can actually damage them so we'll take a, a, a spray bottle of gas and go straight into the intake just got to grab it pull it out a little bit what kind of uh what kind of uh, uh what kind of air fuel mixture they're getting now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna squirt three good, and I'm gonna get three That's good pumps of gas in here. Now I'm gonna time. hold the throttle all the way up. I try to leave them open, but sometimes they just fall back in the lock. Um, and I'm going to adjust the idle speed up higher than it normally would be and let it run for five solid minutes. Start it back up. And I'm gonna adjust this a lot higher than I will before I send it out. That's all the adjustment I've got on this one. That's all the adjustment I've got on this one. in these bolts here so I can take a, a screwdriver and very carefully make sure I don't hit the screw at all line it up about like this and I will smack it with a rubber mallet and 
I'll get the, the rest of the play that I need for that to get, to get the, to get the, uh, the, to the electric chuck. After that, the electric chuck will pull off as it warms up and it should drop down to the right speed. You want to make sure that you get your alignment here. You want to make sure that I want to make sure I lift those up. And I can turn this to get it out of my way. And I'll, if I get one side of the line, I can then here's on this side. And if I start with one side, you want to be careful to get actually in the bolt hole and lined up and just and I missed it. It went to the side. So again, I'm going to make sure that I've got the right alignment. And that would that I'll do the same for this side. And again, the the plastic studs that hold them together are off. And it lines up and snaps in. I've got it should line up as well. If it doesn't line up, you might want to consider taking it back off and using a rubber mallet or something to smack that back over one way or the other or up and down while taking care not to damage any wiring or anything else in there associated. Pieces that it's they can go on at any point in the assembly, so I don't necessarily have a, a specific order for that. that. These go in right here. I will spin the, the lock nuts all the way up. And you want to carefully line up to your hole and spin it in. You get to a point where it's all the way up. So I'm going to take it back to where I can line up properly. And I generally set these so that the alignment is so that the mirror rods are straight out from the side of the bike. All this happened rather quickly as well. Now there are times when you'll find things like wiring issues or things not working where you have to actually go in and work on them and whatnot and fix what's wrong or because the goal is to put out a quality product and China doesn't always cover all their, all their bases. They'll line up to on the top of the forks here basically on the top of this little section here there's a couple of tabs that they then hook onto um, and sometimes like for our Solana model these are almost impossible to get on to because we don't have enough space between here and the forks so on the Solana model I'll actually take a pair of um, pliers and I will actually grab onto it like this and I will, I will, I will pull this edge all the way off to get the space I need doesn't look pretty but it's out of sight from the customer and unless they take it apart they'll never see that and probably not even recognize the fact that it was done like that so by the factory that is required to mount that down so i take that one loose and this one loose and there's also a little rubber washer associated with that too make sure you get them both to go back on there and you pull them outwards, both like this, then that gives you a lot of play to work with and it helps with getting these things in here and on there properly. So just pull those out just a little bit, spread them out. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna hook this up to the top and I'm gonna drop this down on here and this one as well. So now I've got a slot here that down the bottom. And it's going to help get me in alignment real easy. And I can use my tool to zip it down. Again, holding them in place by my fingers so they don't shift. And all I have to do is work with the, the edge. And my alignment's already there. And I'm going to start that by hand so I know it's nice and I'm not, cross th I'm not cross th crossing the threads. My tire and my fender spacing are correct, so if it's they're too close, when uh, you get somebody big on here, they might actually rub. So I'll take it and I'll bend that back in and pull it forward a little. It's an option, a trunk or no trunk. We always install on ponies and trunks. Some models we don't.
but they're getting back. And then they've got a couple of uh, the ponies. These are not used. We take these and we just toss them to the side. What we want now is the rest of the mounting gear. I've got washers and nuts. Plate underneath. I'm going to be using these four holes here. And I've got, sometimes these are different sizes, these are. I've got longer ones and smaller ones. I'm going to put the longer ones in back. Sometimes I zip them all down with it with a with a with my gun and with a Phillips bit. But since these are lock washers, I'm going to hold the hold the, the bolt still and come up underneath and zip the lock washers up. And again, just snug because they're locked. And my goal is to get them all down. Because I had a problem with getting that, that socket up here, I'm gonna now hold the bottom with the with a wrench. And I'm gonna go ahead and get them all torque them all down now. And now most people will say we're probably done here, but not me. A little bit to the side so that it fits around that that wire there pull, pull this in lock it down take the key out and place it with the other set of keys that way no i know all my keys are in one spot and uh it's up to the customer to separate break make sure that i have enough. and if i can touch my fingers easily i don't have enough tension so I'm gonna adjust the back brake. It's simply a thumb wheel screw that turns it in. If I turn it a couple turns, in this case, I'm gonna turn it four. And I'm gonna try, try, try it again. And now, it's still doing it, but I, I, without drag, but also be, have it be able to tighten. What else? I won't be able to adjust the back if you got that squeeze. All right, so. That should take care of it, and it does. And lately, this is well, two extra screws that uh, go. Usually, their bike is assembled, and now I will finish starting it and running it for that five minutes. Right. Don't forget this. I almost did. Uh, it's a little uh, cover plate for the center. So it drops in here. Poor man. And it has a little. Uh, rubber tabs here that drop in these holes. If you are having a hard time getting this in those holes, uh, you can take a, take anything that screw up. You just push them in and lock them in. And it takes sometimes a little bit of thumb straight to do. You have to work it back and forth. But they snap in, relative term, and uh, and there's one here and two on each side here and ideally you're looking for this kind of a fit on it 